I'm not sending naked pictures to people to pay for stuff. Uh, <laughs> because because people would pay for that, right? Of course, Obviously. yeah. Well, yeah, why wouldn't they? You know. Hairdresser's track car. Um, so yeah, my name's Jay. Um, I've got a Ford Puma, um, and this is a little bit about me and the track car, I guess, really. So Jay, tell me about your car. What what is it you're driving? Uh, <clears throat> what is it? It's a 2000 uh, Ford Puma, little 1.7. Um, started out as a uh, it was a relatively nice car to be fair. I still remember the day I bought it, I bought it off some lady in Chelmsford. And um, I could probably take you straight back to her house actually, because I remember, I agreed the price and bought it. And then she wept like a schoolgirl as I was driving it off her driveway. Because I don't think she expected me to take it there and then. And she just bawled her eyes out. But I'd love to take it back to her and go, ta-da, look what I've done to this. <laughs> I've ruined it. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. What makes a Puma a good track car? Because it maybe isn't the obvious choice. It's not, and if you were going to buy a Ford hatch of that era, you would buy an ST150 Fiesta. I mean, why wouldn't you? You get a two litre engine, you get better dynamic, chassis dynamics. Um, but why buy a hatchback when I can buy a sporty little coupe? I didn't realise at the time I was buying a hairdresser's car and probably the most girly car. My first Puma was dog red, to be fair, and I did, uh, I did stand out like a sore thumb in it. I remember turning up, showing my mates, like, look what I've bought, and they're like, quick back short back and sides perm or something like that and uh i don't know they get under your skin why makes it a good car top gear 97 car of the year good reference I like that. so this is jay's hairdresser's car i mean uh track car so jay talk us through some of the stuff on here like the ironing board on the back for example we start with the wing yep and the aero so i wanted a big wing kind of don't we all i, I like <laughs> i like the look of it but I, I don't want something that i could just buy on ebay so i wanted something functional so this was designed by BYC Designs, uh, Mark, up in, up in Preston, up north. Up, up, north. up north, proper up, God's country. Yeah, proper God's country, Yorkshire tea and everything. So he did the wing and the skirts. Originally we are going to do the wing, but he knocked me some skirts up as well. And it's not just fit and forget, you know, knock something up and build it. This is all um, CFD tested. So wow, okay. So he modelled the car. CFD, I did the splitter, canards, and I saw these on a Ferrari GT3 car, so I thought if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. <laughs> uh, and I think I think the idea behind these is it stops air going in the wheel arch and uses the wheel as kind of like an extractor to, yep. to remove the air. Next mod is... I see I see the obligatory use of uh, cable ties. Yeah, Mark, put, Mark gave me some of them little nice things. So, um, yeah, the next mod for the aero is we're going to vent the wing to release the pressure out the arches. Yeah. And I've also got some wide arches coming for it, but they're not your standard bolt on round here. They're a bit Are they more... like the racing Puma ones or? No, they're actually, so the rears are off a Mark V Golf British Touring car. Wow, okay. And the fronts, we haven't quite worked that out yet. We've but got we're... a carbon fiber bonnet as well. Yeah, this was this was from your mate, performance trim. Yeah, indeed, a couple of years so, ago. Uh, yeah, Hi, bon Mike Skinner, how you doing? <laughs> Bonnet's about, uh, I've had that God, for that's... eight, nine years. Yeah, got to so, be. Yeah. I would say nearly 10 years. Yeah. Wheels. Um, so these are from a company in Germany. I messaged them on a whim, asking if they would like to send me a set of wheels out. And uh, yeah, they did. So these are ProTrack Motorsport wheels. Um, they're really, really big uh, in Germany, getting on. Um, they're lighter, size for size, to the equipment sort of team dynamics or that sort of yeah. thing. Um, I've given these absolute death nailed so many curves on tracks in the last couple of years and they have not yet warped buckled bent cracked or anything brakes as i say 300 mil yeah, you see the, the, but we've just i've just there. done um a four pot caliper upgrade on it last week so Very yesterday nice. was its first time out and it now stops like an anchor being thrown out the back <laughs> um, actually it's good that there's 
new German wheel manufacturers because we heard this week that BBS went into administration, which is very sad. Did they really? Yeah. It's not good. Uh, should we have a look inside? Yeah, go on then. There's not a lot to look at. That's purely, surely the... Uh... Exactly, yeah. That's the idea. So this is probably where most of the work has gone into. So just removing the weight. You can see up there. <laughs> the stickers on the roof as well. Yeah, yeah. It's actually something to look at when you flip yeah. it upside down yeah. the track. Yeah. Um, and it's very plain. Yeah. Nice door cards. Carbon door cards. Six point cage with door bars. Uh, Atex C TRS Magnum harness, which is hands compatible as well. Because even got track addict stitching. Yeah. Too. Again, this was a whim. So um, I messaged this company on Instagram, getting on for nearly six or seven years ago. Uh, maybe no, about about five years ago. Joking said, would you send me a seat out with some track addict branding on? Three weeks later, this arrived. Amazing. But the best thing was, it I, they're an Italian company, and I thought they would just mail it to me. And I was at work, sat in my office, and this Arctic lorry turned up with Italian number plates on it, and all that was in this trailer was my seat. Amazing. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, it's fairly, it's, it's function, so... Steering wheel, the seat's as low as I can physically get it with the cage, so the, I've just lowered the steering column a bit, that was a faff, welding brackets up and stuff like that. There's actually, there's nothing behind this dashboard, it just covers wires. Um, the wiring loom's been paired back as much as possible. Yeah, it's, it's functional, so. Hacked to park down here to get the cage through. Yeah, well I thought, I've got a friend who works for Aston Martin, he's a bit of a design engineer. Um, well, I think that's his job, he's And I asked him to 3D print some nice, yeah. Um, blanks to go in there because I thought the cage and dash would tuck behind. Um, I had sent him a message saying, don't bother with the, with the dash blanks and just sent him a photo of the hole that I'd cut into it. He's like, <laughs> oh, good, yeah, because they're a nightmare to me. You do a lot of track days with the car. The T-shirt's a bit of a dead giveaway. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about Track Addict and about your experiences with the Puma on the track. So <clears throat> Track Addict kind of came about as a bit of a pub bet between me, my brother, and a few friends. You see a lot of stuff out on social media um, um, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube for loathe, loathe the, what, the car scene, like the stance scene. It does me head in. We're into cars, appreciate what people do. But there's not a lot for track days, and there wasn't, there was even less for motorsport, you know, on Facebook and Instagram, and it's grown a little bit, but I kind of think we kicked it off in a little way. So we just set this Instagram page up for people to submit pictures of their track cars, we repost them goes out to a wider audience uh, and, it, and it snowballed from there we've been doing it since what 2013 so seven years now um, and it's grown organically you know we've not done this you know by followers I haven't got an OnlyFans account you know I'm not sending naked pictures to people to pay for stuff uh, <laughs> because because people would pay for that right of course yeah well, well yeah why wouldn't uh, but yeah no, that's, that's what tracking it is it's, it's more of a community so if you go you know track days can be quite lonely places places if you go on your own you know, if you've got a track addict sticker in your car and you see somebody else in the plane that's got one, it's almost like a conversation starter. You're part of the same community. Um, and it's, uh, it's introduced us to a hell of a lot of people. And, you know, we've met some incredible people over the last seven years. And it's opened some doors that, for me, I thought were really firmly shut. So it, it's taken me places that um, most people, you know, could only dream of. And uh, a lot of people would give a limb for um i mean yeah you're here in the automotive tales studio so exactly. I mean, that's it yeah you've, yeah I've, you've made the, it well everything it's all downhill from here now isn't it so this is the peak <laughs> so but yeah you know track at it i got a phone call from um autosport international magazine uh, i thought it was a joke to me i thought it was really mucking about um and they wanted somebody to go to the nurburgring for a weekend and learn to drive the nurburgring with rsr nurburg the instructor company um and i sort of said well i'll have to have a, have a think about it literally put the phone down, ran the back and said, yeah, I was joking, of course I'll do it. We have a whole other Automotive Tales video planned for Jay's exploits at the Nürburgring with RSR Nürburgring. So stay tuned and check back for that later. Yeah. Have you taken the Puma to the Nürburgring and would you? No, why would I? It was horrible <laughs> driving over here. <laughs> what, 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 how what, how what, far is it to what, the studio here from your house? 20, 20, 20 minutes, minutes, 25 minutes, why would I? It's horrific. I had enough of it by the end of Cadwell Park yesterday. They're doing me in. No, I wouldn't. I, I really wouldn't. Um, eight hours in that thing on the motorway, no chance. I'll rent something while I'm there. I'll fly. I will fly to the. Like, I will fly to the Nurburgring. I will rent a car and I'll do it. In there. Tell me about the the best track or the best track day you've done with the Puma. Uh, in terms of outright performance on the car. 
yesterday at Cabo Park. hosted what was the last ever track day at Rockingham in November, in the November of 2018. Um, we'd done a few, I pestered the guys at Rockingham to let me have the last date, they gave it us and it sold out to just a bunch of friends. So everybody on that pit lane knew each other, 60 cars, and everybody on that pit lane was friends and it was brilliant. That was the best. It was kind of like a great send off for Rockingham uh, and it was just yeah, it was just a good laugh all round. You know, nobody was chasing times, nobody was being an idiot, everybody knew each other, so it was really friendly and really open. There was no egos or anything like that, and it was just one of them days where, like a really crisp winter's day when the sun's out, it's not particularly warm, but everything's dry and it's just nice, it's brilliant. Yeah, great, great, great place Rockingham was. Really miss it. Talking about the mods on the car, what do you think is your favourite mod you did to the Puma? What was the, what was the thing that made the most difference, let's say? Uh... Well, with the Puma, you, you've got to play to its strengths. It's never going to be a rocket ship down the straights. It's 130 horsepower, so you do what it does. You you you, you know you improve the bits it's already good at. So handling, it wasn't very good at braking. So we did, uh, yeah, the brakes were woeful. So as I say, we had a bit of a, a hybrid of Ford parts from a, a Mondeo, or if you want to be really posh, Jaguar. <laughs> X-type calipers and it uses an ST170 disc, uh, makes it bigger. And that was great. We had it on standard. I think we just had some eBay discs and pads on it and it worked really well. But the best part we did was it was uh, we worked really closely with Tarox brakes and they fired us out a set of their race spec, uh, you know, for sort of fast road track um, pads and discs. And that just transformed it. it. It really showed what sort of difference proper materials can make on a car. Um, and since then, um, We've always used Tarox brakes on that car and anything else that we kind of class as the track addict fleet. So we, uh, yeah, it was, that was probably one of the best things we did on the car. Just being able to, you know, you can't get down the straights particularly quickly. So you arrive at a slightly slower speed, but being able to carry that speed deeper into a braking zone, then just really get on the brakes. Yeah, it really helps. Yeah, and then just taking the weight out of it just to make it, you know, brought it alive. It's um, the Lotus principle, simplify and add lightness. No, the Ford principle, let it rot. <laughs> yeah, like, talk about the track addict fleet. So it's obviously not just you behind the track addict name. So who else have we got involved? Uh, we've got Craig. He's got a little Clio. Uh, what is it? It's a Clio sixteen valve, but it's got two litre Williams engine in it. Um, Haley, my sister in law, she's got a Mazda MX five Mark One turbo, which is bonkers in a straight line. 
we need to get the handling sorted on it. it needs a few tweaks, but it's a, that's a really good little car. Uh, Liam, or Goldie, uh, with his clear 197, with that at Cadwell Park yesterday, that's, you know, with the last 12 months, that thing's had a, God knows how many bits and parts and money thrown at it, but what a little car that's turned into. Um, Wayne, clear 172. Uh, Brett, clear 172, 182, something like that. Um, Alex with his Lotus is, is a new one every time I see him, to be fair. I think he's got a Honda powered one at the minute, which is, yeah, I imagine a K20 in one of them is going to be pretty rapid. Um, but yeah, 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 you know, we've met so many people through this and it's, track addicts become a bit of a family more than anything now. So Also met the missus through Pumas as well. So uh, yeah, the wife, she had one. We started passing each other and she had a red one, I had a red one. Little friendly wave turns into uh, six years of marriage this year, <laughs> been together 13 years. So yeah, you know. The power of car clubs. Exactly. And you know, while, while the car is a track car, I, you know, keep tell the wife that it's, it means something. It's sentimental. It's what we met each other through. And you know, if there's not a Puma in the house, well, then it's an empty house, isn't it? So. Absolutely. Right. So it, it's now part of the family. Oh, too right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Tall Tales. Uh, do like, share and subscribe and check back for more Automotive Tales content. Right, to my standards, but yeah, all the hangers on and you know, the ones that like to get all the free shit that I blag for. <laughs> and, 